By the time 1986 rolled around, Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't just a hot property in Hollywood. He was a pinup for the entire muscles and mayhem revolution of the decade. It was a time of big hair, steroid-filled, pumped-up muscles, and Arnie was, to put it simply, one of the most prominent characters blowing bad guys away on the silver screen. Wrong. Of course, he had competition in this regard. We can't overlook other notable action heroes of the time, and the rivalry between Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, for example, was almost as legendary as the classic movies they both unleashed on audiences. No! Arnie has since admitted that their rivalry got out of control at the time, but this simply pushed both men to up their game as much as possible, for better and worse. Right. Both stars had already firmly established some of their most iconic characters by the mid-80s. Who are you? The worst nightmare. Stallone was up to part four in his Rocky Balboa saga, while Arnie already had the Terminator and Conan the Barbarian in the bag. Plus, he'd also just obliterated about 10,000 wrong uns in Commando. Susan and Lance, and I think we're here to make... Do me a favor. Don't disturb my friend, he's dead tired. This rivalry may have been the catalyst that spurred the muscle-bound actors to up their game, and for Schwarzenegger in particular, his next movie would be key. Which brings us nicely to the movie we're focusing on in this episode of Arnie Revisited, 1986's Raw Deal. Released just a couple of months before Stallone's legendary Cobra. I remember there being a fun video game tie-in for Cobra on the ZX Spectrum at the time, where you had to dodge babies in prams and headbutt bad guys. Not the other way around, thankfully. I don't seem to recall one for Raw Deal, mate. So does that mean that Arnie struck an early misfire with the movie? Well, slick your hair back and slap on that tight white vest, as we're about to find out here on Revisited. Who do you think I look like? Dirty Harry? Stick around. You should not drink fake. I'll be back. I remember first seeing Raw Deal on VHS when it was released here in the UK. It was an 18, which meant I had no chance of seeing it at our local cinema, despite me and my pals planning an elaborate Ocean's Eleven style heist to sneak into the movie theatre. No, that infantile plan was always doomed to failure. So, VHS, it was. And I'm not talking about a pristine, just bought from HMV copy, no sirree. My older brother had friends who had an uncanny ability to source movies from the high seas. I was none the wiser and just happy that our folks were out, so we could see if Arnie could follow up Commando with another balls-to-the-wall action masterpiece. I even had a Commando poster on the wall, alongside some Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Skid Row and Iron Maiden ones, because metal and movies go together perfectly. When Raw Deal was released midsummer in 1986, it was in the same marketplace as Stallone's Cobra, The Karate Kid 2, plus comedies Ruthless People and Class of Newcomb High, all films whose key demographic would have a vested interest in wanting to see Arnie slick his hair back and lay out some punishment to all and sundry. Arnie, at that point, was a massive influence on high-octane cinema and was in the peak era of his badass and batshit crazy action movies. The general consensus of the movie, from all accounts, is that it's a lesser Arnie vehicle, and with it being sandwiched in between Commando and Predator on his resume, this may be a fair point. However, did it have a production team and cast that would help to elevate it above expectations? Looking back on the movie almost 40 years later, Raw Deal's director, John Irvin, began his career working on documentaries and TV shows, including adaptations of Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, as well as Hollywood movies such as 1980's The Dogs of War, Ghost Story from 1981, and The Excellent Hamburger Hill from 1987. His pedigree is great, with a CV full of excellent projects and some decent awards to his name, over a career that has spanned over 30 years and is still going strong. The two years prior to making Raw Deal saw him take on some dramatic horse action with 1984's Champions, plus the romantic drama Turtle Diary from 1985. His versatility as a director was very apparent, so when the chance to direct one of Hollywood's biggest stars in the follow-up to one of his most iconic movies must have been a no-brainer. Pretty daunting also, to be fair, 
but a challenge that any director at the time would have jumped at. As well as director Irvin, the production had a wide and varied cast and production team on board, primed to oversee Arnie kicking some serious ass again. The story was written by Italian screenwriters Luciano Vincenzoni and Sergio Donati, both highly prolific writers at the time, with credits on films such as The Good, The Bad and The Ugly and Once Upon a Time in the West between them. The movie screenplay was written by Gary DeVore, who was best known for witty action movies alongside Norman Wexler, while producing duties went to Hannibal's Martha Schumacher. Of course, the lead actor and the film's main protagonist was played by the inimitable legend that is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the Austrian Oak had a pretty good cast alongside him. Playing his troubled wife Amy was Blanche Baker, who doesn't get to do much in the movie other than drink and bemoan their domestic situation. You should not drink and bake. Catherine Harrell plays Monique, the femme fatale who becomes Kaminsky's ally in his mission to take down the mob, while the legendary Sam Wanamaker is highly memorable as villain Luigi Patravita. Darren McGavin is great as FBI agent Harry Shannon, who recruits Arnie's Mark Kaminsky in the key undercover operation at the centre of the movie's plot. The supporting cast also includes Paul Shinar as Patravita's ambitious lieutenant and Robert Davi as a corrupt FBI agent. The movie had all of the ingredients to be another Arnie classic, but does it still hold up? Do you think it still passed the physical? When I first saw the film, I absolutely dug some of the mad action, but it always felt somewhat of a lesser vehicle for Arnie. Rewatching it with slightly more mature eyes for this retrospective, you can't help but think that the writers were going for an edgier, thought-provoking movie, but that at some point they ditched this and went back to making a formulaic actioner which, to be fair, works in the film's favour. The plot follows an elderly and embittered high-ranking FBI chief, Harry Shannon, who wants to get revenge against a mafia organisation and sends a former FBI agent and now small-town sheriff, Mark Kaminsky, to destroy the mob from the inside. The decision to revert back to action formula sees any sort of romantic subplot redundant within the first 10 or so minutes. When Arnie puts his drunk wife to bed, pours himself a drink, then proceeds to take on an undercover job with tipsy Amy never to be seen again. Perhaps with the balls to the wall carnage of Commando in the minds of all involved, there's an action sequence roughly every five or six minutes. We get a squib heavy opening bloodbath, Arnie chasing a fake cop in a jeep, A-team style, plus he kills what seems to be around 20 or 30 men over the course of the movie. And now... It's your turn. If you paid your hard-earned dollar to see an Arnie flick in the 80s, you'd be expecting a decent body count, plus some killer one-liners, with plenty of the former and not-so-good examples of the latter in the movie. Losing improves your character. Winning improves your wardrobe. Also, there must have been a fire sale at the local submachine gun prop store, as it seems like everyone in the movie has one. Arnie has several, while even the extras brandish them like they're going out of fashion. 80s action cinema went big on everything. Muscles, mayhem, guns and sexy ladies. Most of which raw deal features in spades. Towards the end of the movie, we're given not one, but two climactic bloodbaths. One in the quarry, and one at the mob's HQ. Humorously, there's no establishing shot of Arnie going between them, we're just thrown into the action each time. It's as awesome as it is ridiculous. And overall, while the movie can't quite match Arnie's other more well-known films, it's a blast to revisit. It's nice to be one of the family. Raw Deal was released in the United States on June the 6th, 1986, and made $5.4 million in its opening weekend. It held the highest place in the box office charts for the new starts that weekend, with fellow debutants Space Camp and Invaders from Mars down in number six and seven respectively. Oh, and of course, the My Little Pony movie that was down in 10th place. Why do they always have to tell me Smell shy. <laughs> Stallone's Cobra, which had been on release for three weeks already, had grossed almost $35 million, while the Tom Cruise mega movie Top Gun was still at the top of the box office listings. I feel the need, the need for speed. Raw Deal ultimately grossed $16.2 million, which, based upon the talent involved and the success of other movies at the time, was considered somewhat of a failure. Critically, the movie was met with a mixed response, to put it politely, from most reviewers at the time of release. Roger Ebert awarded it 1.5 stars and said, 
This plot is so simple and has been told so many times before that perhaps the most amazing achievement of Raw Deal is its ability to screw it up. This movie didn't just happen to be a mess, the filmmakers had to work to make it so confusing. However, the New York Times were slightly more forgiving in their critique, saying that the film isn't exactly Oscar material, it does nothing for the cause of non-violence, it will warm the hearts of gun lobbyists everywhere, and its final body count may be even higher than that in Mr. Stallone's Cobra. I don't think Arnie or director Irvin ever imagined that the movie would be Oscar worthy, so that point is moot. However, despite a negative reaction from most, the movie holds up for yours truly, if just for the crazy action and Arnie's awesome slick back hair alone. More importantly though, what's your take on the movie? Did Arnie and co deliver another kick-ass 80s actioner that still holds up well today? Or was that slick back hair and white vest wearing violence too much for Arnie to handle? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section and we'll see you wonderful action fans next time here on Revisited. Thanks for watching. Down. There is no down. Hey, I'm not a cop, I'm a player.